me. Oh, what are you doing here? Well, I'm just uh, hosting a compilation of Studio C's best parody sketches. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm doing. What? That's what you're doing, but yeah. but that's what I'm doing. Oh, so do you think maybe we we should maybe host, host this, this together? together? <gasps> nah, I'm good. But Naomi, we need two hosts. You know, two people tossing some banter back and forth. Nah, it's fine. I'll just talk to myself. Excuse okay. me. Um, whoever heard of talking to yourself? It's kind of weird. She's kind of weird. That's okay. Uh, now here's a sketch where someone talks to themselves. Thank you, Carson. My lord. <sighs> Carson, what is taking dinner so long? I'm famished. Apologies, my lord. Mrs. Patmore is preparing something... new. Oh, fiddly womple bitty bottoms. Do try to stay calm, Robert. Remember your ulcer. I saw a monkey today. A monkey? I doubt that very much. I did. It was during one of my sad and lonely walks by the village. Don't be ridiculous. It's probably just a squirrel with a fanciful tail. It was a monkey. You're a monkey. Oh, do try to get along. Your sister's saying you love each other very much. As I recall, the fifth Earl of Grantham banned monkeys a hundred years ago. Along with number three pencils and toenail clippers. Good thing, too. Foul things. Number three pencils? Monkeys! <laughs> Dinner is served. Finally. Oh, it's not so it's late, my lord. We tried something new. Daisy, know your place. What the dickens is this? Eggs, my lord. Eggs? After 11 o'clock in the morning? <sighs> Mrs. Patmore, what's the meaning of all this? I'm sorry, my lords and ladyships. I've been trying to save money. It's called breakfast for dinner. Breakfast for... This is an outrage. Carson, get my coat. Oh, please, Mama. I will not have eggs in the evening. What has become of us? I saw a monkey in the village. I told you that it was just an anemic raccoon. Mama, won't you even try it? <laughs> Come, have a bite. Never! Your father, the fourth Earl of Grantham, would be absolutely mortified. Mama, times are changing. Now we either change with those times, or like other great houses, close our doors forever. Mrs. Patmore's only trying to save us money. Now please, Mama, eat the eggs. <laughs> Open, Mama. <laughs> Mama, there's an easy way and there's a hard way. Open. There. Oh, good. Hmm. Well, I suppose, if it's already made, I think we all learned something here tonight. One can have breakfast for dinner, but it doesn't change who we are. Eggs, bacon, muffins. We needn't fear it. Dalton Abbey will survive as long as we remain a family. Now, let us eat. Come, join us, Mrs. Patmore, Daisy. Carson, that's an order. Oh, no. 
Hey, this is new. Daisy, know your place. Oh, try this on your eggs. It's called ketchup. Ketchup. Go. <laughs> Well, Matt, you've come a long ways and had a couple of close calls a few times, too. Yeah. But here we are at the final question. If you answer correctly, you'll walk away from here with one million dollars. Now, what will you do with the money? You and your wife, Whitney, want a charity, is that correct? Yes, that's right. Is she here? Where is Whitney? Hi, Regis. Whitney, what will this money go towards? Uh, we're planning to build and supply orphanages in third world countries. Well, that's very noble of you two. Well, let's see if Matt and his orphans are about to become millionaires. All right, Matt, here is your question. Who was the 26th president of the United States? Was it A, William McKinley, B, Theodore Roosevelt, C, William Howard Taft, or D, George Washington? I'm not sure, but I know it's not George Washington. Maybe Roosevelt? Would you like to ask the audience? Yeah, let's poll the audience. All right, audience, time to weigh in. Who was the 26th president of the United States? Let's see what they said. Wow. Literally 100% of our studio audience feels the answer is D, George Washington. Yes. I'm sorry, everyone, but I, I don't think that's correct. Are you positive? Yeah. Well, it's a bold choice to go against numbers like that. Mm-hmm. But George Washington was the first president, so he really couldn't have been the 26th. Well, your wife was one of the voters, Matt. <laughs> Are you sure she got it wrong? Well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honey, but I don't think that it's George Washington. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, would you like to phone a friend? Yes, my sister Mallory is a professor of history at Stanford, so... Well, let's go to the phones. Hello? Hello, is this Mallory? It is. Mallory, hi, this is Regis. I'm with your brother Matt. He's going for a million dollars, but he needs your help. Uh, okay, what's the question? Okay, Mallory, who was the 26th president of the United States? Is it A... George Washington. What? <laughs> no, let me give you all the options. No, I don't need the options. It's George Washington. Final answer. <laughs> No, Mallory, George Washington was the first president. I need to know who the 26th president was. I heard you, and I'm telling you, it's George Washington. Well, he was a founding father, and he fought in the revolution. Yes, and to honor him, they made him our 26th president. Why would they wait that long? He would have been dead by that point. Isn't it Theodore Roosevelt? Theodore Roosevelt? I don't even think that's a real person. Well, she seemed pretty emphatic. But she's wrong. You're all wrong. Are you sure? Yes. This is basic, basic American history. Now, Matt, you could choose not to answer and walk away with $500,000. No, I'm pretty sure it's Teddy Roosevelt. I'm going to answer B, Theodore Roosevelt. Are you sure? <laughs> what? There's a lot of orphans counting on you, Matt. Are you sure you want this to be your final answer? I'm pretty sure. How confident are you? I'm pretty confident. I mean, I was more confident before I started asking everyone. It can't be Washington, right? I mean, there's no way I'm wrong about that one. Well, how confident are you? Well, it's just weird that everyone thinks it's him. And my sister teaches history for a living, so maybe. Would you like to use your final lifeline? Oh, yes, 50-50. Let's do it. All right, computers? Oh... <laughs> This is not happening. It has to be Roosevelt. Now, you could choose not to answer, but if you guess wrong, you'll go, uh, only walk away from here with $32,000, and after taxes, that's more like $2,000. <laughs> no, I gotta go for it. All right, well, a minute ago, it seemed that you had ruled out Washington completely. Yeah, but that was before your little light show and the music and everyone telling me I'm wrong. I don't know what I know anymore. No! No, it has to be Roosevelt. My answer is Roosevelt. Are you sure? Uh, Think about the orphans, Matt. You are the devil, Regis. 
We need an answer. I gave you one, but you keep making me doubt myself. What is your final answer? D. George Washington. That's incorrect. I'm sorry. Uh. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the 27th Annual Westminster Cat Show. I'm Logan LaCroix, joined, as always, by Portia Pattinson. Good to be here. We're in the final round of Westminster's Best in Show event, and the competition is... <laughs> First up, we have Mr. Mittens, an American tabby. Our judge today is Peter Humphreys, feline expert and author of Domesticating Myself, Why I Live Alone. Portia, what do you think he's looking for in the challengers today? I'd say he's looking for a cat. Oh. Run the cat, please. This breed, like all cats, is known for being moody and obstinate. <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do this to me. Not here, not now. Such poison and grace. A stellar run, and a new hairdo to boot! Up next we have Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a tortoiseshell breed, and a member of the Supreme Cat. <laughs> Cause like the... All right. Agility course. Run the cat, please. This breed is known for its agility, grace, and speed. Coming up on the tunnel, always a challenge. Oh! <laughs> oh. Masterfully done. Masterfully done. <laughs> There's the finish line! Oh, and a stellar finish oh. to boot. <laughs> okay, moving on to the last cat testant, Cat Meese. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a tiger with his claws in! <laughs> retract! Retract his <laughs> Oh, it's doing very nicely on the floor routine. <laughs> This is why we come to these shows, ladies and gentlemen. The Siamese cat is one of the more active domesticated breeds. Siam is no longer a country. <laughs> and perfect dismount. Run them all, please. You know what, Portia? This is going to be a difficult one for our judge. All these cats are absolutely despicable, which is exactly what you're looking for in a competition like this. And now for the moment of truth, who will win best in show? Our winner today is... Dog owners. Oh, <laughs> yep. Once again, dog owners have won Best in Show. Thanks for watching, America. See you next time. Fun little behind-the-scenes tidbit. Uh -huh. Some of those cats were not real. Wow, really? Hmm. Mm -hmm. What were they? Have you seen those videos where Andy Serkis is in a big onesie and they turn him into a gorilla? If you do that with a possum, you can CGI a cat over it easily. So possums are easier to train than cats? No, no, no. Okay, let's see some more sketches. <laughs> Mom? He's gone, Jonathan. Will's gone again. I don't know where he is. I've searched everywhere. He's gone. But if he could communicate through the lights before, he can do it again. Okay. I'll pull out the Christmas tree as well. Wait, why? We have to reach him, Jonathan. It's the only way. Help me with these decorations. What about the lights? Just help me. We have to contact Will. Do you see Will? Anything else? Hang this mistletoe in the kitchen. Will? Will? Why is there a turkey in here? We have to reach him, Jonathan. The smell will reach him. I don't understand. Go to your room. Go get more lights. <sighs> Mom! Hurry up, Jonathan! Will, can you hear me? Ah! <gasps>
Why are you putting up so many decorations? The love will bring him home, Jonathan. Will? Will? This is ridiculous. Come help me in here. What is this? It's Father Christmas, Jonathan! Will! I'm almost positive this thing took Will. Christmas might not be enough. Scatter these all around. Oh. Quick, put this next to the elf. Seriously? President's Day? I'm gonna light these? Mom, stop, so stop. Hey. Stop, he's gotta be around here. There's no need for this. Will says he loves us. Mom, no. Fax me. Go fax him, Jonathan. Just sit down, Mom. Go fax him! You're cool. <gasps> Thanks, Will. Mom. Will! Sweetie, is that you? Are you okay? What happened? There was a man. He saved me. Was it Father Christmas? No. <gasps> President's Day worked. You're safe now, young Will Byers. Thank you, Rushmore Presidents, sirs. Remember, young Will. Speak softly and carry a big stick. Because that Demogorgon, he's going down like a cherry tree. Hello, sharks. <laughs> My name is Tim Brackets, and today I'm seeking $400,000 in exchange for 15% of my company. Let me start with a question. How many of you are parents? <laughs> me too. <laughs> and how often are you just sitting there with your wife on Christmas Eve, wrapping Tonka trucks until unholy hours of the night. <laughs> and you know that in three hours, your little tykes are gonna wake up and trash the place with your and Santa's wrapping paper. Bless his heart. <laughs> and it's 3 a.m. and the pressure is on and you're sitting there thinking, how did I get here? <laughs> and you're running out of tape and your marriage is hanging by a thread and your life didn't even turn out the way you thought it would. Just disappointment after disappointment. <laughs> and you're sitting there thinking, there has got to be a better way. <laughs> That's when I came up with Christmas surprise. <laughs> now, instead of wrapping each individual gift, you simply put these on your little tyke and bring out an unwrapped thing. Then, when the little tyke removes the glasses, Christmas magic ensues. <laughs> it's clean, it's reusable, and you can use them twice. <laughs> so what do you say, sharks? Who wants to unwrap their way to millions? It just looks like a pair of glasses wrapped in paper to me. That's mostly exactly right, Damon. <laughs> My product combines the power of wrapping paper with the power of eyewear to surprise little tykes for Christmas. Do you do this full time? I quit my job about 13 years ago, and I've been <laughs> doing this full time for nine years. <clears throat> so how are you and your wife now? So what do you say, sharks? Who wants to tear into the gift of a million dollar situation? Tim, do, do your kids like using these? Uh, yes, Mark Cuban, but only every other Christmas, because that's when they're with me. I'm sorry, you got divorced? Oh no, my wife and I are happily married, we just can't do Christmases together. Because <laughs> of the pressure. <laughs> so who wants to take the wrapping paper off of their eyes to see us shaking hands on this deal? <laughs> okay. 
Me? Are you okay? Mm. Huh? Like, do you need help? Huh? Tim, I don't think you have a business here. I'm out. I don't know how I would be able to help. I'm out too, okay, buddy? I have no idea what's going on. I'm out. Tim. Yeah. Instead of buying these glasses, can't you just tell your kids to close their eyes and then open them when you put the gifts in front of them for free? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. That's exactly what you could do. I didn't even think about that. Oh, I sold my used car dealership for this. Tim, you fool. Tim, Tim, hey, it's okay, buddy. No, no. they're useless. Christmas is going to be such a stress fest this year. Tim, I think I speak for all of us when I say you brought in a terrible product. But we all like you as a person. Do you have any other ideas? Yes, I do have these. The surprise goggles for unwrapping gifts underwater. Congratulations, Tim. I'm in. I think I might be able to help. I'm also in, okay, buddy? I think you have a business here, Tim. I'm in. I know exactly what's going on. I'm Robert. Here's some more ideas I've had. Umbrella glove, tuna bird sandwich, or food for dogs. Call it dog food. This season, ANC presents a brand new version of Breaking Bad. Let me get this straight, yo. It's exactly like the original with a family-friendly twist. You want to teach crystal clear math? That's right, Jesse. I know how to instruct, and you know the students who need instructing. All right, so if we're gonna like make math, we're gonna need a safe place to teach. ANC presents Fixing Good, a shot for shot remake of the original hit series, Breaking Bad. But this time, it's fun for the whole family, and it's educational. These. Geometric proofs are like two pages long. You're an artist, Mr. White. Now I need you to distribute these to every school in the valley, starting with the technical college. Those kids crave math more than anyone. You write all of your math in blue ink? What if you make like a mistake? I don't make mistakes. My math is pure. So go ahead, invite grandma over. She'll love it. Do you have the blue math? Yeah, but be careful. This isn't your basic algebra. Whoa. Look at all these formulas. Oh, I feel so alive. Like I can take on any complex fractions. Whew. Was it him? I think so. This guy seems to be taking over. Even the prep schools are getting nervous. We gotta find him before another nerd gets killed. Socially. So what are we gonna do about that guy? Parabolas, logarithms. Partial derivatives. But what is X? What is X? Sorry I'm late, dear. That traffic was unbelievable. Huh. Oh, I forgot something in the car. I'll be right back. Experience all the drama from the original without any of the drama from the original. Completely backed up. What is this? Now, let me explain, Skylar. Explain what, Walt? That you're a math tutor? It's only temporary until I can get my teacher's certificate. Tell me the truth, Walt. Are you a math addict? Of course not. I only write the math. People who use math after college deserve to go to prison. It features all your favorite characters. This classroom has everything that you'll need to prepare math. And how much math are you expecting exactly? 200 equations a week. What? That's like 100 equations per day, yo. 
I'm not sure he should be teaching. No, Jesse stays. I need him. Now, how much will we be paid, Gus? 25,000 a year. What? That's like a thousand dollars per week, Mr. White. And don't worry, Dad. This show puts the action back in fraction. What are we gonna do? Mr. White, Gus is gonna kill us when he finds out about all the pre-calculus we've been doing on the side. I told you, I take care of it. What was that? A math lab explosion. What did you do? I divided by zero. Tune in this fall to the show the New York Times calls very clean and very confusing. And don't forget to tune in next spring as ANC turns the walking dead into the crawling living. You've never seen babies like this before. All a part of the new ANC family.